The Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, uh, you're awful. And AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome back to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of Fantasy Six Pack dot net. With me as usual, AJ Applegarth. What's going on, man? Hey, hey. What's happening? Watching your, uh, watching your beloved Eagles. That's right. Uh, right now, losing to the Green Bay Packers, ten to seven. Whatever. Uh, Eagles Whatever. just got a touchdown though, so um, I won't spoil nothing for you. I guess too much during the game. I guess because you're you're watching a good 10 seconds behind for whatever reason so um you you guys and your uh streaming television um yeah i just haven't gotten around to getting a direct tv to come out here to set up a line for my basement yet <laughs> That's all right. i feel like there i mean there's already a jack down here so it shouldn't be that difficult but it's on the other side of the room which makes it a little more difficult but whatever uh all right so I mean, but quick thoughts about the game so far, man. Like I, you know, I'm, I'm looking so far, and it's the Devonte Adams show, big time. I mean, that's that's my quick takeaway on it. Devonte Adams is, they're looking to get him and and make up for last week's dud. Yeah, I mean, Adams has been worthless this year so far. We'll get into that later, but, um, I, I knew it was only a matter of time for him to to get going. So of course he has to take it out on the Eagles like he always does. So thanks for that. Don't most against that secondary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So, all right, man. Well, let's get going. We got a, a big show tonight. Get into some news and notes. Going to do a little uh, draft delights and disappointments. So a little, a little double D action, which goes right into my beer of the week. So let's get to that. Mm, beer. So yeah, I I'll, uh, I'll lead with that and say I'm doing the Dominion Double D IPA. Uh ni- nice little picture there on the front. So um yeah, it's a it's a solid IPA. It's not it's not one of my favorites, but um it's it's definitely like a three and a half. It's just a a good standard double IPA. It's yeah. I'll I'll, I'll drink it if it's put in front of me, that's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's probably not much beer wise you there, would drink this. Yeah, put, I've had a few on this one in front of you. But all right, what are you drinking? Well, since the Eagles are on, and I'm uh, drinking my my hometown brew of Victory. I think I've had it on the show before. But Dirt probably. Wolf. Oh yeah, double good IPA, stuff. eight point seven. And let's just go ahead and do that right now. <laughs> Uh, Welcome back, Alshon. Actually, actually, I gave it three and three quarters on untapped. My bad. I just I'm checking it in now. The so double I, D. I, I forgot. Yeah. Nah, yeah, it's, I've, it's, I know I've had that one. That's like the missile or whatever on the front with the chick. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good stuff. So, all I right, man. Let's get into a four and a quarter. Get into. News and notes, and obviously we have to lead with Melvin Gordon ending his holdout. Um, came back today. Not going to be eligible to play in week four. or no, Well, he's just not going to play in week four, I mean, period. Um, no. So you get one more week of Eckler and Jackson, and they should do very well this week up against the Miami Dolphins. But – want to ask you man you know just prediction you know are they gonna give gordon the the full-time role right back i mean maybe you know obviously i I would expect it to take a couple weeks you know kind of you know give him some time to get up the game shape and things like that but uh is this something that you know you just think by i don't know what week eight maybe they're gonna give him the full-time role back and you know eckler and and jackson kind of are nothing or are they gonna keep eckler more involved than they have in years past um 
I think they'll keep Eckler involved, at least for these first couple weeks to get Gordon back up to speed. I mean, the last thing you want to do is have this guy hold out for three weeks, then not play in the fourth, come back in week five as his week one. I mean, who knows what kind of football shape he's in or anything like that. I, I would assume he's in decent enough shape to, to come back. Um, but you don't want to risk an injury here. And then he's he's worthless. I mean, you're paying him all this money. I think they were they not paying him through the holdout right now, or is it was it I think only fining him a good bit of change? So okay, yeah, I couldn't remember what the specifics were on that. So you know, it, he's an investment, and you obviously like the guy enough to offer him a. a you know, franchise type contract, albeit not one that he was happy enough with, but still around 10 mil a year. I mean, that's, that's pretty solid money. Uh, I mean, I would take that. So, you know, I, I just think that they're going to have to split the carries up. And I mean, Eckler's shown that he's solid and, and can play. And even last year, he was solid. I mean, he was rosterable and and startable as a flex play a lot last year. Yeah, I wrote down. I you know I wrote something last night and I put it on Twitter and I said, uh, "Remember weeks one through six. I mean, of course, after that, like they just they fed Gordon the ball so much, like it just r- removed Eckler from the equation. It seemed like, but in weeks one through six, when they actually utilized both of them, Eckler was RB sixteen in half PPR leagues. Um. He was averaging 11.7 points, so not awesome, but like that's at least flex value, right? At least. Um, yeah, clearly his value takes a hit, uh, but but he's not completely worthless. And I don't know. I'm I'm of the opinion that the the Chargers aren't going to just hand this backfield to Gordon as much as they did last year. I think they're going to keep. Eckler involved a little bit more than they did throughout the entire season last year. So yeah. I think Eckler's still useful. It is a shame because he's been a beast um, this year so far, but it's not going to continue at that rate, unfortunately. So those owners who took a chance, I'm one of them in many leagues. Took uh, you know took him around 7-8, uh, I think earlier in one. Um, you're you're going to be hurting a little bit because you're not getting that RB2 value anymore. So. Uh, yeah. other notes and, and, uh, I'd be curious to see if Keith will chime in here. Danny, Danny Jones, man, Daniel Jones, Danny dimes, uh, shows up for his first start, man. Looking good. Uh, two touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns. Now people, now people going heavy on the waiver wire form. Um, yeah, he gets the, the Redskins this week. So still not a great defense. So maybe he does it two weeks in a row. What's uh, what's your initial opinion on Danny Dimes, man? Well, I somehow managed to get him in Raz Bowl. Uh, I think I put oh, solid, three dude. bucks on him. Wow, that's um, a lot. Because we only get ten. I put, I know, I put three on him. I put two on Gallman. Got him from somebody else who put a one on him. I got, I don't know, I can't even remember. But they're not showing up on my team. I, that site. I'm I'm almost torn to say which is the worst site between my fantasy league and <laughs> NF, NFC whatever is NFC not my favorite. It's, uh, whatever. Yeah, it's, it's like it, you need to log in every time you go to my teams, and then it's yes. like okay, well log in again, and then you go and figure it out, and then it's like okay, well here's my transactions. Cool, it shows that I've got these people. Log in a third time, and then go to my team again, and then it's like where the hell are they? I just spent basically all of my fab last night. Right. Uh, and I don't know where they are. So I, I don't know. Hopefully they show up and I yeah, can. They're, they're the there. Benefits, it, but... it takes a little time to get used to it. It, it. I've played in a couple baseball leagues on there before. Um, I do the, and I've done, an, I've done one NFBC league on there and I did the TGFBI on there this year. So it does take a little getting used to, but it's just another one of those sites that doesn't have the greatest UI, which is unfortunate because yeah. they're, you know, they give that flexibility. They're they're so used by all the, you know, the, the, whatever you call them, the um, 
basically the professional fantasy football and baseball players. So, yeah. Rut row. Just going to leave it at that. Uh, you'll see in a minute. Great. Um, so. Start drinking now, then. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, man. Daniel Jones looking good. Uh, I mean, hey, I they're, I think they're definitely going to win a few more games. And, you know, and and I'm curious, like, what do you think about his fantasy value, like, overall the rest of the season? I think it's pretty good. Um, I, the thing that you have to look at here is obviously the first game was huge, and there's going to be some regression there. Um, but, uh dumb. Um, <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, he just saw the fumble. <laughs> but was it a fumble? Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. It looked, it looked uh, iffy. Yeah. Oh no, he's down. Yeah, I think that I think that's coming back. He's down. Yeah, I ain't worried. Coming back. I got the Packers defense in a couple of weeks. <sighs> Still drink just in case. Kind of hoping, I, don't, but, I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I, uh, I think he's going to be good. No. I think his floor is at least going to be good because of, he's going to run a lot. Yeah. Um, and especially now that Saquon's not there, he doesn't have the safety valve. Uh, and yeah, so he, he's going to have to run a little bit more. I mean, you know, we'll get into the next topic here. Saquon, obviously out, uh, they're saying four to eight weeks and now he's been put on the IR. So that's just even worse, man. Crushes my hopes and dreams and, and Scott Fishbowl. Oh, welcome to the club. Yeah, man. Uh, it's it's cold and dreary down here, but uh, yeah, I was you know, doing beer's good. still fresh. So it's unfortunate, but as you mentioned earlier, Wayne Gallman. It's Wayne Gallman time, man. Yeah. Are we excited at all? I, I don't. I don't. I guess. I don't know. Like I said, <laughs> I got him in one league. I put in claims for him yeah. in a couple of leagues, but then oh, yeah, I was I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> freaking out um because of all the talk we had on slack about like why why are we doing this and then i'm like uh, yeah I, I don't know i guess a knee-jerk reaction <laughs> so yeah, they don't I they mean, literally don't have anybody else no. now there's still cj of... anderson yeah. sitting out there Jay Ajayi. so jay jay is now healthy and, and for whatever reason everybody is going to pick him up right now well, um, in, in, in leagues like Scott Fishwell, where people probably have just junk. Well, right? yeah, you, you know, can get rid of some of the these. You can just take third players and pick him up. Yeah, take a chance. I, I, yeah, I would have done it, but I, I literally can't find anybody to drop unless I want to try to drop Saquon. But I'm not going to do it in the hopes that I make the playoffs and he comes back. Um, yeah, it's just no way. So, yeah, I, I'm not. I mean, Gallman. I'm looking at his his. Stats from years past. I mean, in 2018, a 3.5 yards per average, or yards per carry. 2017, 4.3. Nothing, nothing good here, man. Like it's just, it's not, not anything to get excited about. Not much in the no. passing game either. Doesn't score a lot. I mean, hasn't had a lot of opportunities, but still, just nothing that should really excite you. I mean, he he's a. I think at best like a low end RB two. Uh, I did get him. I just put in like dummy bids in a bunch of leagues and got him in two of them and was like, "What? Okay." Um, so, <laughs> I he's sitting on my bench though. Like I just I can't do it. Um, it's unfortunate though. I mean we've seen a we've seen a lot of injuries and a lot of top guys go out, especially quarterbacks. So, you gotta hope that uh, <clears throat> Saquon can come back and you know maybe toward the toward the playoffs here for fantasy and, and, and help out owners again. <clears throat> uh, the last thing I want to say is uh, Cam Newton's injury update is a Liz Frank injury, dude. And uh, they're saying Ugh. he's going to be out a significant amount of time. Um, there's a week seven is like the earliest he can come back. But I mean, like clearly not a doctor here, but just from history of watching people who have Liz Frank injuries, it usually lasts longer than that. And, you know, it could potentially knock him out for the entire year. Um, and Kyle Allen, man, he threw four touchdowns last week. He had a huge he game. Was a monster. I'm, uh, I'm glad I went out and grabbed him uh, as a. I might have not put anything oh, on him in Fishbowl. I can't remember. Maybe it was like six bucks, but still. 
That was yeah. I got him for six dollars last week because uh, everybody went just freaking yeah. Everyone crazy, went after blew their load on Mason Rudolph, who sucks yeah. apparently. And uh, I was like, ah, screw it. I'll put six bucks on Kyle Allen. Maybe the cam injury is something real. And then it ended up being something real. And so I got him. And, of course, I forgot to swap him in my lineup for Case Keenum and lost by five points. Yeah, that was awesome. So uh, that one one hurt. Karma for beating me by two points. Barely two points, not even, by the way. Yeah. You're welcome for that. So, uh, yeah, man, it'll be interesting to, to see what goes correction. on with Cam. But uh, Kyle Allen looks like a, a legit replacement there for Carolina. It doesn't look like – I think the big thing is the takeaway from there is in two quarterback leagues, you can trust Kyle Allen. And then in cool. in other leagues, like you, you're still going to be able to trust the rest of that offense. Like it's going to be fine. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, you still have one of the top running backs in the game. He's still going to get all of his touches um, and, and continue to perform. Um, you know, the defense is, is decent. Um, so they can help hopefully stay on the field for a little while Mm -hmm. to help give the offense a rest and vice versa. You know, still got a a lot of young, good receivers there and, and you still have Greg Olson too. I mean, assuming he's finally healthy and doesn't have a foot injury a foot injury of his own, you know, it's like they traded places this year. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think, uh, I think that they'll be okay with, with Allen under center. Looks like it so far. So, all right, man, let's move on. We've got our primary segment for the night. And that is our, which you, uh, you, you decided to dub the double D, Delights and de- disappointments. So this is yes. guys who the delights are guys who are kind of outperforming where they draft, where you drafted them. Uh, guys who are kind of, you know, yeah, we thought they'd be good, but they are outperforming where they where they were drafted, and, and kind of a, a very pleasant surprise. And then we'll get into some disappointments. So obviously, guys who are um, drafted fairly high and not performing for us so let's start off you want to start bad news or good news uh start with the good news i feel like the bad news is a lot easier to talk about sure so yeah man all right so we'll do quarterbacks first and then we'll go running backs and then receivers so um good news so we've got top of our list here man we've got lamar jackson and dude this I mean, this guy, I mean, he was drafted, you know, anywhere. I, I saw him go anywhere between, like, QB, like, 8 or 9. And I saw him go anywhere as low as, like, QB undrafted in some leagues. Like, crazy, right? Um, I think in most leagues, if he was sitting out there in, like, the last round or two, he was just snatched up just in case. And kudos to that owner, right? Like, he's been awesome. Now, granted, he has played Miami. And then... I believe it was Arizona, right? Yep. Uh, and then last week he played Kansas City. Not exactly the um, juggernaut defense, but they are, I think at least, I think everybody would um, agree that they are better than the previous two. And he did struggle a little bit more, but he still put up some decent stats. Um, but I, you know, I want to ask you, like, do we think we're going to see more of like the first two weeks with Lamar the rest of the way or last week with? Well, I, the thing I didn't like about last week was, and I like Harbaugh a lot as a coach because he, you know, came from the, the Andy Reed Eagle family tree there. Um, I, I did not like his calls with this going for two every other touchdown. I mean, like once they missed it on the first one, once they missed it on the first one, they were forced to do it. You know, the next couple of times you have the best damn kicker in the game. Why are you wasting your time trying to be that aggressive? I get it. You're playing Kansas city. They're an abomination of success, but you have to take points when you can. And every point clearly matters. They lost by what? Five points. And yeah, 
Two of those were failed conversions. It might have been three that were failed conversions, actually. actually. It was three. Because they had to go through the end. So, yeah. Correct. Yeah, that's right. So, they had to go for the two to get back the other two that they missed earlier. And then they missed it again. So, I I didn't like that. But but getting back to Jackson, I think he's, he's the real deal. I think he's got a lot of... Um, nice. A lot of <laughs> Ram- solid Ram- 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 comments by AJ. He's play, the game, everybody. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> he he's got a really good chemistry with with that team right now, and you know that's one of the things that I heard him talk about in an interview was just getting getting with the guys, learning more, and and talking to them, communicating, and you know forming these bonds and everything, and. Obviously, they're a run-first offense. He's really a running quarterback, is what he's been deemed. He's well, been he's throwing the ball really good times, at throwing though. the ball this year. I mean, let's not forget this guy was a Heisman Trophy winner. I mean, usually that's the kiss of death for quarterbacks in Dude, the NFL. He's but... thrown the ball more than Dak Prescott. He's thrown the ball more yep. than Deshaun Watson, uh, more than Jacoby Brissett, more than Mariota, more than I mean, more than a bunch of guys. Yeah, and, you know, he's he's right there with you know. Right there with Wilson, right there with Brady, right there with Josh Allen. Oh, whatever. Um, still though, he's there with a bunch of guys. Like he's right in the mix. Like it's not like he's thrown the ball, you know, seventy times so far, which is I think what kind of people expected. I mean, last year it was kind of you know super low passing rates. But yeah, no, I agree with you, man. Like uh, I, this offense is just different this year. Um, they've brought in some more talent. And it's making a huge difference. His second year, he's more confident. He's 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 legit staying in the pocket a lot more. Although he's still yeah. able to run. I mean, the the touchdown he had this past week was a great scramble uh, against Kansas City and made a guy miss in the open field. So it, that skill is still there, and he's gonna get that, you know. And so that's just gonna help you. I think Lamar. Yeah, will he finish QB two? Hmm, probably not. But can you finish top five, top six? I don't see why not. Yeah, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'd put him up in top three yet. But, but yeah, man, I think he can, I, I think wouldn't he be can surprised if he did. But I, I don't. I mean, I think a lot of that is going to be because he will eventually start to run more along with these passes. Mm-hmm. And teams teams are gonna have to start, you know, respecting his arm at this point. So, you know, they're gonna have more coverages and whatever, and then they're gonna get burned by his legs. So, it, it's it's crazy. Yeah. So the second guy we have who I who I just mentioned is Dak Prescott. Uh, and if you're looking at the slides to the left of us here on the screen. You're seeing Dak Prescott was drafted as quarterback 17. Um, and he now ranks number three. And he's just been on fire, dude. Um, he's got 920 yards, nine touchdowns, two picks, 88 rushing yards himself with a touchdown. Um, the efficiency with him is just crazy 70 for 94. Um, and yeah, they haven't had like the juggernaut. Uh, schedule either the Giants the Redskins the Dolphins they do play some better defenses coming up so they play New Orleans this weekend they play Green Bay um, then they go against the Jets which is meh Philly probably better than the first three but still not awesome especially in the secondary Um, but you know it does get harder so what are we what are you thinking for Dak the rest of the way I mean, we, we all knew that their schedule was going to be a cakewalk for the first four weeks. That's why their defense was so heavily, you know, drafted in, in leagues that still play with defense. So I'm not surprised to see this stat line. I'm, I'm a little surprised to see how high it is. But overall, you know, ceiling wise, it doesn't surprise me there like i knew he was capable of doing this and, and it was a guy that i liked and actually talked about in my um my qb preview article as a sleeper pick because 
I mean, he's he's got a lot of talent around him. Uh, you know, this team is is built to win every year by Jerry Jones's standards, even though they don't, um, which is fine with me. <laughs> um, I just I think that they're gonna their schedule is definitely gonna get tougher, and he's just gonna have to keep the foot on the gas if they want to succeed and and get to that goal. Um, so I, I like Prescott a lot the rest of this year. I mean, even with the tougher games, don't don't care. He's going to still put up numbers. Yeah, he might unfortunately make me eat my words on Cooper. I'm hoping I'm hoping that balances out, man. Cooper's making me look real bad. So <laughs> yeah, won't be the first time somebody has. So all right, moving on the other side, our disappointments. I mean, you you got to go with the quarterback in this ball game, right? Aaron Rodgers. Uh, yeah, dude. Like what the hell? Drafted at his QB three. He's QB 22. Like not even startable. And, uh, I am legit. I only own him in one league and it's a dynasty league. The only reason why I'm starting him and hey, maybe I shouldn't anymore. It's because my second quarterback is Andy Dalton. And I just don't want to trust Andy I, Dalton. But, like, I might have to. Um, I, yeah. I don't think there's a problem <laughs> with with it's, Andy Dalton. It's not good, man. It's it's not good when Andy Dalton is outscoring you. So, I mean, I, I don't know what it is with the Packers this year. I know they're focusing more on the running game. They're focusing more on defense. Their defense is pretty damn good, finally, right? Um well, yeah, I think that's the biggest takeaway here is that they are – their defense has really stepped up so far this year. And it'll be it'll be very interesting to see what happens. That's carrying them. If, you know, because the first, the first few games, right, so the, the Packers are 3-0. The first few games, Rodgers has gotten out kind of hot. Minus the first game. The Bears game was just kind of close and low scoring. Yeah, but the next few games, like they got whatever. out – Pretty pretty quickly, he got a touchdown or two pretty quickly, and then they just kind of shut it down, right? They just played D, they ran the ball, and Rodgers just kind of – that's what he did. I, I mean, But is that what we're going to get from them, except for the occasional, like, shootout game where they've got to catch up? Like, if this team's going to be that good, is this what we're going to get? He's just, he's just an average fantasy quarterback? Yeah. I think so, 100%. That's – um, shocking dude it's so it's so weird to think that like oh just, boom you just i know and speaking of the devil aaron <laughs> Rodgers fumbles the damn ball so uh Suck here it. comes carson wentz uh, um so yeah 14 13 as we Eagles. were saying perfectly timed thank I know. you aaron Rodgers, for being the uh, aaron Rodgers reach that i called out yet again in my 2019 fantasy football quarterback preview article on fantasy six pack.net <laughs> um drafts are over but check it out still a great read um if i do say so myself uh but yeah reaches I, I had him as my top reach and you know basically he was still a productive fantasy quarterback when he's healthy but you know he he's he's played in 16 games seven times since 2008 um it's just, you know, I don't know what it is this year. They, they, they don't have a running game. They haven't had a passing game. It's really just been their defense. I feel like no, the run game hasn't been bad. They're just splitting. Yeah, they're not. They're not scoring touchdowns though. They did last week finally, but Jones has been bleh. I mean, Jamal Williams is is basically splitting carries with him. Yeah, I mean, uh, or snap percentage. But to say they don't have a running game is not the right thing to say. To well, say they don't have like one. Their running, running back. game hasn't been productive. I mean, Jones has three touchdowns, dude. <laughs> uh, it's it's yeah, been it's how, been how all many right. Yards not, does not he have awesome. though? Not he had awesome. two touchdowns on fourteen yards or some bullshit last week. Nineteen yards. Yeah. I, what what do you do? That's your fantasy points are coming. You're strictly touchdown dependent. If you yeah. play in one of those leagues uh, that that is only touchdowns, um, great. Then then go for it. But yeah. how many leagues are like that nowadays? 
I mean, Bob Lung is probably the only one that I know that still plays in one of those. <laughs> yeah. So, and he's been in that same league for, what did he say, like 20 some years or something? Yeah. So, I mean, that's crazy. Um, but, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Rogers I mean, I, I, am, I am worried about Rodgers being able to, you know, be a consistent quarterback that you can rely on week to week. You know, you know he's capable of having those monster games, but it's just trying to guess when they're going to happen. Who knows if this game keeps going the way it's going, it might be tonight because he's going to have to play catch up. So, you know, maybe we're getting one tonight, but those are going to have to be the, you know, if this defense plays the way it is, it's going to have to be far and few between here for that. So, all right. Last disappointment quarterback. Go with uh, Mr. Self-Confident himself, Baker Mayfield. Um, not looking good, man. Not looking good for Baker at all. People were high on him, including me. And, I mean, for good reason. The weapons on that yeah. team are incredible. The offensive line was supposed to be good. The defense was supposed to be good. Like, everything was supposed to be good with this team. It's just not working. Period. Not, not working at all. Um, draft his QB four. He's right behind Rodgers at number twenty three. Uh, Thirty nine point one fantasy points. So I get it done, man. There are quarterbacks that have scored more than that in one week. So, um, yeah, not not looking good, man. Any hope for a bounce back with Baker, or is this just like, you know, he he's paying too much attention to the news and, and the noise to be able to bounce back here. Yeah, I think, I think that he'll be able to bounce back. I mean, it's a long season. You got to give a guy a chance. And I, I think that they just fell victim to, you know, what they are and all the hype that surrounded mm -hmm. them this, uh, this off season. I mean, they were talking Super Bowl. We're going to win the Super Bowl this year now that we have this, 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 and this. Okay, yeah. well, show it. You're, what, one and two? Yeah, it's not good, man. I, I mean. I think there's hope for Baker. There is. Because, uh, you know, I just, I think he's too talented. He's just got to get his head on straight on the field, man. He's, you know, I, I, I don't know if you read that article with Rex Ryan where he, like, basically – came out and said all these things about him and did they're all true. You know, he tries to, he holds onto the ball too long. He runs around. He's not making accurate throws. He's not making smart throws. He's trying to, you know, he's trying to force it downfield. It's just, he's not playing good football right now. Uh, so yeah. someone's got to rein, rein him in and just, uh, and, and figure it out here, but let's move on to some running backs. Uh, we're kind of dragging here. So let, let's move, move, let's move a little faster on this here. So the running back delights. We've got Mark Ingram. Uh, I mean, this was a guy that I, I liked, but you know, because of how much uh, Lamar Jackson, you know, he thought was going to run, and maybe you know they're going to mix in Gus Edwards, and they drafted Justice Hill. You weren't always sure what the workload for Mark Ingram was going to be, but apparently, it doesn't matter, dude. He's just scoring touchdowns, and that's going to matter more than almost anything else. So he ranks number four, drafted his QB, or running back number 22. Um, I mean, could is, is there any chance he finishes top 10 quarterback or running back? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know about top 10. I mean, hey, um, he's, he's looking good. That offense case the way it is, man. I, I think I do legit think it's possible. Yeah. I mean he'll be he'll be close. It, it, he's that's the problem though. You look at his, his three weeks. He's had two really good weeks and one stinker of a week. All it's gonna take is a couple more of those stinker weeks and they're gonna have to be forced to throw the ball and this and that. Um so it's is he's not gonna be dependent on as much. Uh, but I, I think he'll crack the top ten. I mean, I think he will. Let me let me revert on it. Yeah, I mean, especially with Barkley out for a long time, right? I mean, yeah, Zeke, Zeke will that's come back. True. Zeke will come up. I don't think Bell. You know, Bell could 
potentially do it, but uh, I mean, Bell's kind of iffy. You know, David Johnson could get up there. I mean, who we, who we oh, trust yeah. to to jump over him besides those three at this point? In, yeah, in that's true. Four, like, I mean, Derek Henry's. You know, maybe Mixon gets it going, but yeah, right. I mean, Mixon's we'll, terrible. We'll talk about we'll him. talk about him. Yeah, you know. um, I mean, it's it's not good out there in the running back landscape, but so I, I think. Uh, Ingram has a chance, and and so you know the next guy I just talked about him is Derrick Henry, and yeah. now he's a guy who's making me eat my words too. I just did not like him coming into this yeah. year. I didn't think the consistency was there for him, same way as Amari Cooper, um, and you know I, I think a lot of people felt that toward toward the end of the draft season his stock dropped. Uh, early on, it was really high. People were just going like, "Oh my gosh, the finish of last year was amazing," and then people started looking into it more. And he fell down the running back ranks. He was running back 18. He's now running back six. So that's pretty huge. Um, pretty huge jump. He he's had he's had some really good games. Um, and they just they play and are not using Deion Lewis. I mean that's all there is to it. They just don't they don't want they don't even try. They, uh, they don't at all. He gets like three carries a game and like and that's two it. catches. It's so yeah. bad. Like he's just not even used. Um, I, I don't know what happened to Deion Lewis. He was he was good in New England. He went to Tennessee and just sucks. Um, so, I mean, what are we thinking here with Henry? Can he keep this up for a full season now? I mean, is this is this legit? I I think it might be, man. Um, I, it, like it pains me to say it because I was such a anti Henry guy, but he's he's good, man. He's really good and. Uh, I think it was I don't know, somewhere. Was it on Slack? Somebody posted his like high school oh, stats yeah. or something. It's been like freaking 4, unbelievable! Crazy. Yeah, his One senior season. year, four thousand yards. Like, and the other the other years were still good. And he was like over two thousand in all of those. I think. I mean, yeah, that's pretty he's, nuts, man. He's had the talent. I just think if they're gonna keep going the way that they are he's going to be worthwhile and he's easily going to finish in, in the top 20, if not top 15. Oh, I mean, I think, I think Derek Henry, if he, if they keep him with this workload, that, I mean, that was my worries. He wasn't going to get the workload that he did at the end of last year, but they're getting yeah. it to him. So now, now that, they're, that now that they're giving it to him, I think he's another potential top 10 guy. Um, I think so, he'll be close. I yeah. don't know if he'll crack it. Yeah, I mean the the uh, offense could close. hold him back because the offense just isn't very good. So yeah, um, just just to rip off some guys here, we don't have to say anything about them. But you know, guys that have kind of overperformed their their draft value here surprises is Burkhead, Eckler. Of course, we know that that's gonna probably come to an end pretty soon. Uh, Malcolm Brown's been good. That's really off of one week, though. McCoy's outperformed his ADP pretty obviously because his ADP was pretty trash um, it, because yeah. he was a Buffalo for most of this draft season. Carlos Hyde has been pretty solid, dude. It's a flex play. Yes. Barber has been off and on. Ronald Jones off and on. We talked about that. Philip Lindsay yeah. finally came to life last week. Tony Pollard had one big week. Uh, so, you know, the, you, you know it's possible if, if Zeke goes out that he's he's capable. Um, so yeah, Roy Freeman, Alexander, Alexander Madison, uh, round out the top, uh, uh, kind of draft delights. Jesus. So moving on to the, uh, draft disappointments for running backs. Um, we've got, um, the guys that we want to highlight here are James Connor and woof the, uh, I, I don't even really know if it's his fault per se. Um, no, I mean he was battling some injuries, you know that that didn't keep him out from playing. But you got to look at at eat it. Um, you got to <laughs> look at at what what they're doing in Pittsburgh. I mean Ben has been garbage yeah, and then injured. Not gonna be. Um, it's not gonna get any better for him, unfortunately. Yeah, um, Rudolph is is mediocre. We don't know yet. Yeah, Not, I think it's just mediocre, dude. He'll make yeah. some plays because there is some talent on that team. 
Uh, so he'll 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 make some plays. He'll have some weeks, but I don't think it's enough. You can be, you know, you can, you can rely on obviously. And Connor is going to suffer for it too. I think he'll get better. I don't think he's going to finish running back twenty eight like he is now. But yeah, uh, he he's no, got to get some stuff fixed real quick that. here. Um, so yeah, I, I, I mean, think uh, it is a little bit of a buy low opportunity for Connor. I I think so. I mean, I was not real high on him coming into the year. I I, yeah, I bought really hard into the. He's not going to get a lot of touches, this and that, you know, or as many touches. But I, I just think and that I don't it's. I think he is, but it doesn't have anything to do with his. It, it's, you know, yeah, it's, it's just the offense a in general. game management. Even with Big Ben, they like... just weren't good, dude. It was weird. Uh, the next guy we have highlighted here is Joe Mixon for Cincinnati. And, and yeah, you know, he had he had the uh, what was it, ankle injury. Um, he played through it. So that obviously hurts his performance here a little bit, but I mean, it just even when he has like been quote healthy, it's been ugly for him. Yeah. Uh, so I don't. I I I think he can you know probably slide back up in like top twenty eighteen range, but I don't, I'm not feeling good about mixing at all, man. No, I don't know why. Uh, There's just something that offensive line is atrocious. Um, the defense yeah. is really bad, so they're uh, gonna they're gonna be passing a lot. Is kind of the unfortunate thing. So I think this really really hurts Joe Mixon. And, yeah, and I just thought that you know he could at least get some early in most games, but it's not happening. Um, no, he, they just really haven't been able to open him up for him and let him get out into space and run. I mean, and he's really not even a factor in the passing game right now either. I yeah. Feel like. So even that he, he scored a touchdown yeah. last week, but I mean, still two receptions, yeah. three receptions, two receptions. It, that's what I mean. He can it's catch just... the ball. So it's weird that they're just like not involving him as much. They're just throwing the ball downfield. John Ross is eaten. Um, except for last week, you know, Boyd's been solid. Yeah. It's, just yeah, I mean, it. maybe once AJ Green gets back, um, that'll help because they're they're not going to be able to stack the box as much and and let Dalton throw to these other receivers. So, right, I, I think that's going to be his potential saving grace. Yeah. So uh, I'm not going to rip through the other names on here because I don't think anybody really cares. Obviously, I think the biggest name on here that that most people would even care about is Duke Johnson. People were really high on him and. I think uh, I think Houston's just given up on him randomly. It's like, wow, all right, they, interesting. They have. That's I mean, what they, I put they, into the, they even tried the running out, back chart today. They even tried out C.J. Anderson. Like, if that doesn't say they're done with him, I don't know what does. So, uh, moving on here to the wide receiver delights. How do you not lead with Hollywood Brown, man? That dude's been incredible, right? I mean, yeah. Obviously, we're talking talking a lot of. Uh, a lot of Ravens here, but I mean, nobody expected this, right? Nobody expected this offense to be this damn good. Uh, so, no. Hollywood Brown, wide receiver, sixty-seven, overall ADP of one eighty-seven. I mean, legit, not drafted in a lot of leagues. Uh, picked up waiver wire after first week. Um, he's now ranked twelfth. He's had some monster games, and you know, after week one, people were still skeptical. I, I was. You know, I thought no way is that going to happen again. It was Miami. They just were, you know, point to prove. Um, and, and, you know, you were like, the targets just won't be there. They're not going to pass enough. Well, they just kind of continued. It just yeah. keeps happening. So, I mean, on the same boat is Lamar. Like, is this – do you see the, the passing volume – sticking around enough to keep Brown a viable, you know what, let's say at least wide receiver three, two range. Uh, I think so. Um, I mean, he's really all they want to throw to. That's not a tight end. So he had a lot of plays last week where they tried to get on the ball and they were just terrible throws. Right. Um, and then he finally started getting in, involved later in the game. But I mean, he, he had a couple misses there too, that were just not on him. Mm -hmm. So I think they're, they're still going to be a run first team, but he's, he's awesome, man. He's been great. 
Yeah, and then um, I had to take the opportunity to finally talk about a Redskin player, which you don't get to do very often here. And that is... <laughs> not not in a good light. <laughs> yeah, not usually. Uh, Terry McLaurin. And I'm not saying his nickname because I think it's the stupidest thing in the world. Um, so Terry McLaurin, dude, he's uh, he's been so good. Uh, I, I, I did not like the pick coming out of... At a, out of college here this year in the draft, I thought, oh, no, here we go. We just drafted a, a burner guy, um, Yeah, especially mixing the fact that we didn't have a real good quarterback. I mean, Keenum's okay, but, you know, whatever. And obviously we've seen him be okay. Yeah. Um, but he's been good enough to make McLaurin a good player. And the Redskins have no running game. Uh, the defense is bad, especially in the secondary. So they're passing a lot. I mean, McLaurin has 24 targets in three games. It's eight targets a game. It's a lot. That's that's yeah. Um, the volume is is incredible he's for caught, him. He's only caught two thirds of his targets, but I'm sure not all of those are his fault. Um, yeah. But still, he has scored in every single game. And now this week they're going up against uh they're going up against the Giants. Who? Sorry, Keith. The Giants' defense is probably about as bad as the Redskins, so uh, this might this might be a high-scoring game. Uh, you know, I I could easily see him getting into the end zone again. The next week against New England is going to be a different story, but uh, <laughs> I I like his chances this yeah. week in New York. Um, but I mean, what what's what's your what's your thoughts on on him moving forward? I mean. He he's he impressive, be man. Brown, dude. I, I think he could too because of sheer volume alone. Yeah. Um, and the fact that the skin sucks, so they're going to be throwing the ball a lot. I mean, Keenan's already thrown, I, I don't know, eight thousand attempts so far, <laughs> four so, three weeks. Well, so okay, so there. I want I want I I want to ask you. I think we all all agree that at some point. Keenum's going to get benched. Haskins will come in. It's just a matter of when, yeah. right? You know, some people are calling for it this and week. And then you're looking at former teammates from Ohio State throwing the ball to each other. But does that well, matter? not to each other. I, but Dude, I don't know if that matters, I right? Like, I, think it, I mean, I think it helps. Look, it doesn't hurt the situation. It doesn't, it doesn't I don't hurt. know if it helps, but it sure. doesn't hurt the situation. Absolutely. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt. But I wonder if Haskins is actually ready. I did not like what I saw from the preseason. There were many times where, like, the play was called, and that's all he tried to do. And if it wasn't there, it wasn't there, and he got took a sack, or it, like, it was like a quick pass, and like the passes came out real awkward looking. I don't know. There was just something about Haskins where, like, I know people are all over Gruden, and I don't like him as a coach either, but I think that he is a hundred percent right that Haskins is not ready, and if you put him in, it's going to yeah. hurt his. It's going to stun his growth. Yeah. So I agree with not putting him in, but I think eventually it's just going to be enough. Like ownership, the front office is going to say enough's enough, put him in, right? I just wonder what's going to happen to McLaurin when Haskins is there running for his life and just freaking out because there's no offensive line there at this point to help protect him, which he desperately needs. So that's the one worry I have with McLaurin. But while Keenum is under center, I think he's fine, man. I think he's a plug-and-play guy right now unless you've got really good options in front of him, which the one league I own him in, I've got really good options, so I cannot figure out how to plug him into my lineup, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, On the disappointment side, got to start with Diggs, man. Got to start with Diggs. And, and, and I know you wrote one down Cousins league. as a disappointment quarterback, and I crossed it out just because – you know, we're running out of yeah. time. We can't talk about a third player right now. I mean, the fact of the matter is, and, and me, me, and uh, me and Dave Eddie talked about this on Sunday night. We do the the Sunday night uh, last call podcast. Um, I mentioned like just how the passing volume in Minnesota is so low, and it's really affecting Diggs most of all, but it's also affecting Thielen. Now Thielen has gotten into the end zone early, thankfully. And Diggs got in the end zone like really, really late two weeks ago when he did have to pause the ball 35 times, I think. But the other two games, it's like, what, 10 and uh, – what was the other What was the other one? Like 10 and 
22 <laughs> times yeah. or something crazy. Like, it's such a low passing volume offense now. Um, yeah. And I think that's by design, which is just nuts to say. Uh, they're just Dalvin Cook's just going crazy. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know what to think about Diggs. Like I think we all know he's talented, but I'm not sure what's going to happen with him if they're just not passing the ball. I mean, is this? Do you think they're going to continue just this low passing volume offense like this? <sighs> I mean, if the run game keeps working, uh, I think that they could. But, you know, th- there's too much talent within that passing game between Diggs, Thielen, uh, Rudolph when they throw him the ball. I mean, he's been kind of crap this year, but oh, you got yeah, Irv Smith yeah, Irv right Smith there. Is, he's been solid. He's been great. So, uh, you know, I think that there's, there's talent there, and Minnesota's just been – winning with the run so you know if it ain't broke don't like fix it sort of deal 21 times passing this past week so yeah yeah, yeah but i mean i i own digs in a handful of leagues and i'm i might start benching him i mean he has yet to break double digits in the yahoo league that i own him in i've gotten a um i had a guy on twitter ask me and i need to pull up the question he was asking me like should he trade Carson and Diggs after this past Sunday and I was like look I mean always look always look for trades right but I wouldn't yeah, go I mean, panic trading at this point because you're going to get garbage value um, yeah it's still early sent, so he sent me a trade offer that he had today and he said would you trade would you do a trade to receive Josh Allen for Trubisky and Diggs now I think it's a two quarterback league, and because we had a conversation later, so two quarterback leagues. His quarterbacks were Trubisky and Winston. Uh, I know what my answer was, but what what was yours? He's given up Trubisky and and who? Diggs, and, and, and he would Diggs. receive Josh Allen back in a two quarterback league. His other quarterback is Winston. I, is oh, right. I says the blind leading the blind there. I, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think not I would good. do it. Yeah, that's uh, what I said. Yeah, I, I my, my Buffalo's res- do, doing well. They're three and zero, soon to sure. be three and one. But um, so his his one comment that really stood out to me eh. was, and I don't know where he's seen this. I'd love to know this. He says I've seen that Diggs will barely be a wide receiver fifty this year. I was like, what? I was like, nah, he's not going to be that bad. I was like, you're losing overall he's... value by giving him up and barely upgrading at quarterback. I mean, look, I I agree. At this point, Josh Allen is going to be better than Trubisky. And Trubisky's yeah. been struggling. He had a good game against the Skins, but who, what quarterback won't at this point? Yeah. Um, but I, I just the, the difference in points that you're going to get from Trubisky to, to Allen, and then you're giving up. I think it worse a wide receiver three the rest of the year. Uh, it's not worth it. Uh, I it says that is prime example of selling super low and just panic trading at this point. Uh, so just be careful making those trades out there, selling low on digs. He's gonna get his. He's too talented, just yeah, too talented. I, and I remember the first he week can. he was hurt. Yeah. So, or se- was it first week or second week? No, first week. Play through the hamstring. We all know when he's got when he's got the hamstring issues, or whatever it is, he's always banged up a couple times during the year. When he's got those injuries, you bench his ass. He is terrible. Yeah. There is proof. There is historical proof that when he's got any little ailment, you sit his ass. And I did week one because you have to. He's just I think so I terrible. I did in, my, in most of my leagues that I own him in too. I think yeah, one I played to. him. Just because I I didn't have another option. Yeah, and it was but, hard. Like week one, you're like, oh my man, I drafted him high, and then no, nah, you yeah. can't. You've got to be smarter about it. Um, and you know it worked out. He was terrible week one. So, uh, the next guy we talked about, of course, he's he's doing very very well tonight. So th- may have to uh, go back and edit this thing later. But I think overall, jo- uh, Devontae Adams has been kind of a disappointment. Um. 
Yeah, uh, he he had. I, I'm scrolling through the ESPN list. I just I can't find him at this point. But uh, judging by the chart that Keith put together for us, he was coming into this week. He was wide receiver 48, drafted number two. So um, he's taken a deuce on your season so far. Um, if you drafted him. Um, yeah, tonight tonight he's doing well. I mean, I think we kind of all expected him to to have a a much better uh, week, especially against the the Eagles secondary. I mean, eight for one fifty eight so far. That's pretty nasty. He hasn't even gotten in the end zone. He's got twenty three uh, twenty three points. So uh, you're liking that. But again, man, like with this offense being the way it's running, like I think you're gonna get these up and down weeks. Um, next weekend because Dallas might be another one of those weeks, right? Uh, where they they might struggle a little bit. Um, so we'll see what happens. It, I, I am slightly, like I'm starting Devontae Adams every week, right? I am absolutely starting him every week, but I am worried that if I drafted him where I drafted him, and you're relying on the points that you were expecting, um, you're not gonna get it every week, and you might not even get close to it every week. Yeah, that's where last year you did. Last year was as nasty for him. You got it every single week from him, so that's the unfortunate part. Um, yeah, I mean he's been a, a major disappointment right now, and uh, you know aside from tonight, uh, of course. But I think it's definitely going to be flowing with with Rogers, and if he's going to continue bad play, then that's going to hurt Adams, but. You drafted him too high. You got to start him and hope that that he gets his and he has games like this, and he will. Um, I just don't see him falling off forever. So, just wish he would have waited one more week. <laughs> it was going to happen against your secondary man. It's so bad. That's why yeah. they're trying to go out and get Jalen Ramsey. Um, well, they need to go get Jalen yeah. Ramsey. They oh, dude, I heard something on ESPN today that. Uh, they offered a one and a two for him, and Jacksonville like ended up pulling him back or, for some weird reason. Like that's a that's a, that's a haul. I'd do it. That's a, especially this yeah. draft coming up. Um, yeah, they they should have done that, but probably. Yeah. But it is what it is. All right, man. Let's move some injury news. So we got. Uh, I'll start off here. Ito Smith. Uh, gonna be out this week, most likely with a concussion from last week. Uh, unfortunately, Taylor Gabriel is gonna be out too. Um, he had a concussion uh, as well. He had a phenomenal Monday night game against the Redskins. Just completely rocked him. Three ridiculous. touchdowns. Re- totally ridiculous. Um, T. Y. Hilton. Now I have not looked up the update for him, but. He is dealing with a quad injury, scored last week, and immediately walked off the field. Just went straight to the, straight down the um, the the ah tunnel to, tunnel. Thank you. I keep calling it a hallway. I was like, that's not it. Um, <laughs> a little bigger than a hallway. Straight down that walking path down there that's <laughs> yeah, surrounded by all the concrete blocks. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I'll take another drink. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> apparently, I need it. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm looking up. He didn't. He didn't play. He didn't practice again today. So uh, it seems doubtful again. At the, you know, at this point, that he's going to play. But we you know we'll see what happens Friday. Uh, that's that's always a, a key factor for for players playing. Uh, Damian Williams unlikely to play. We know about that injury. Kansas City. So, you know, the interesting note that I want to ask here with, with you is that, you know, a lot of people were all excited about Darwin Thompson for good reason, right? I mean, he was good in the preseason. He was kind of the guy off the, you know, the second guy up for them. They signed McCoy. He's now the second guy up. So you're thinking, all right, now with Williams out, McCoy is McCoy at this point. Yeah. He's fine. And he, and he, and he actually He's performed really well this past really week. Good Great game, game right? Um, but he was sort of banged up, so everybody went nuts yep. over Darwin Thompson uh, this past week. Picked him up, stashed him. Some people started him. But then Daryl Williams came in and was actually the guy that was the number two. Um, and if you heard the stupid reports from the pregame 
warm-ups, Darrell Williams was supposed to be the number one, and everybody started him, and uh, started Darwin Thompson, and benched McCoy, and it went complete opposite, so whatever. But, I mean, like, are we just giving up on Darwin Thompson at this point? I know he's been dropped a ton of leagues. He's been dropped everywhere. I, I think I only had him in one league. I was able to get him, and I've already dropped him. Um, I kind of with you, man. I, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree with you there at all. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Daryl Williams was freaking monster, dude. Yeah, he, he was ended really up good. getting. He ended up getting, uh, you know, really involved in the passing game too. I mean, granted, it was kind of a shootout game. Yeah, but the Kansas City, I think man, that gonna he's going to do the same those. thing. Oh, yes, so finally, they're going to they're be in a lot nice of those, unfortunately. Events. Yeah. So. All right, man, what else we got here? All right, so looking next here, we've got Mr. Mike Williams with uh, a back injury. He did not practice on Wednesday. Didn't practice today either. Uh, or, or today, uh, as I've just heard, breaking news. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, that again hurts my scott fishbowl team makes sense that he would be injured and will probably miss the next four weeks so we need to uh, just put your scott fishbowl team out we might as well just put that on the injury report trade uh, all of these players now yeah they will do eventually not be hurt. own any of them it's usually my team you've uh you've eaten my juju up dude god it's, it's horrible <laughs> and i don't even own juju in any league this year <laughs> so what the hell um Julian Edelman is still dealing with a chest injury, um, likely to play, but Buffalo, uh, as I said, is 3-0. They've been very good, um, so I don't really recommend starting him unless you are desperate. Um, and if he even plays, keep an eye on that. Vance McDonald is likely out with a shoulder sprain. Um, now, they uh, Pittsburgh just brought in... Nick Vanette, I think his name is, from Seattle. Yeah, you'd be. So I guess he fills in as Vance McDonald's potential replacement for three targets and one catch. Awesome. Um, Tevin Coleman looks like he should be able to return next week. Uh, San Fran is on the bye this week. So what? what is this going to do? to this like ridiculous three headed monster of running backs that San Fran had without Coleman um, between Breda Mostert and um, Jeff Wilson. Yeah. I mean, what do you think they're going to do here? Dude, I, I don't know, man. I mean, the running game has been productive without Coleman. Um, I don't think they're going to shy away from him, but um, you know, I, I think Coleman Comes back to being the number one. Breeder probably number two. Most of it goes back to being number three. And then, who knows, man? Maybe Jeff Wilson goes back to practice squad? I don't know. I don't know what to do with him. They're not going to start four running backs every week. That'd be crazy. Yeah. They, they don't see to they do don't, that anymore. They don't so. need to. Um, you know, San Fran heads to the bye undefeated. So, and they're been playing good football uh, yeah. and a lot of that is because of the success of this run game that they've got going on and jimmy g's not looked bad either um he didn't look great last week but uh either way so next up we got rashad penny here he's still questionable with a hamstring injury but he did return to practice today um keep an eye on that if he does not play cj Procise looks to benefit the most from Absolutely. that but he's still yeah he, he's more more involved in the passing game uh than the rushing uh chris godwin did not practice uh today or yesterday due to a hip injury so that's not good for his status this weekend uh no, case never keenum those midweek injuries man no Case Keenum has a foot injury and is questionable to play, but he did practice today and should be fine. So keep an eye on that. We already talked about potential of Haskins coming in early, but I don't know, man. Colt McCoy, Colt McCoy got cleared. 
You never know. Uh, well, yeah, maybe they'll bring back McCoy, the <laughs> old gunslinger. Yikes. All right. Uh, so. I mean, a little Scott Fishbowl news. Not not a big wave of wire week. I just want to cover some interesting ones. So Wayne Gallman picked up at 52 leagues. <laughs> As a Saquon owner, I was looking for him. Uh, he was owned in my league already, so I was pretty pissed. Um, his average was $63.23, which is probably pretty spot on. I, you know, probably some people went nuts on it, but I think they just realized he's not very good. So like, even uh, if you yeah. got him, like, what are you going to do with him? You're going to sit him on your bench for $63. I, I wouldn't. Oh, at that point him. you've got to start him. No. I, like wh- the only people that spent that much money are the people that did not spend a hundred dollars on a quarterback replacement. Oh, of course. The first, the first three weeks. So, uh, well, math, I did not math, get math him, would agree but, with you there. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I like that one. Uh, Kyle Allen, the guy who who we got for dirt cheap each, yep. uh, forty four dollars and eleven cents ah. in nine different leagues. So haha, psychos, they're just kidding. Uh, yeah, <laughs> nah, but that, that's pretty obvious play there at this point. I think he was picked up a lot. He was actually picked up for free in a lot of leagues last year, last yep. week. As soon as the cam injury I was announced, for believe, sure. I believe I was one of them. Yeah, uh, Daryl <laughs> Williams. Uh, was picked up in 28 leagues for $24.39 on average. So there. A couple of last guys here, not big names, not anybody I think anybody's going to rely on, but uh, it's just interesting that over 40 people each uh, took $11 to go pick up Dawson Knox and $6 to pick up Jordan Atkins. I mean, this is just tight end premium league at its best here people are just reaching for anything and just hoping this is going to stick but yeah i spent uh, uh 16 dollars on atkins did I, you I really know. yeah i was like doing my claims late and then i don't drinking? know i was rushing no <laughs> no like like late afternoon i literally did them at like noon right before they oh. went in and I was struggling to get through. I was like, who's out there? Who's out there? I had a claim in on Coleman. I only put like 31. I knew I wasn't getting him. And I was okay with that. But I wanted Daryl Williams, and I think I only put like 12 on him. He went for 16. So I should have switched mm-hmm. my, my bids around a little bit. But the other guy here, Dawson Knox, I got him in a dynasty, and he's he's looking really good right now. So he's sitting on my taxi squad. I might have to freaking pull him off of there if he keeps playing this way though I guess I don't know I mean, so I haven't really been paying that much attention to him he's been that good he, I mean, uh, first week he was I mean, he what? Was dealing he with three injury receptions for 67 yards and a touchdown last week fine but like yeah the first couple of weeks one one reception each a total of 19 yards between the two of them yeah, he's no he thanks. was dealing with injury definitely in week one. I don't think so in week two though. But I mean, who else is Buffalo has at tight end? Nobody. So I don't. But does it matter anyway? Uh, we can probably move on. All right, man. Yeah. Let's finish up here with our week four picks. All right. Um, I'll, I'll lead here with high scoring game. I wanted to pick yours, but I don't know. It felt kind of a little obvious. So. It's cool though. I get I get mentioning okay, it for well, sure. Let me pick another one, Jesus. Sure, Christ. man, go for it. I'm not, yeah, I am gonna call you out because I want you to pick it. I meant to leave you a note to say not pick that one. Uh, so mine's Redskins Giants. I kind of talked about it earlier. I just neither defense is any good. Neither team's probably gonna be able to run the ball very well because the one strength for the Redskins is that they do have a good run defense, and now the Giants do not have Saquon, so they're go- they're gonna have to just pass, pass, pass. And that's all they're going to do. The Redskins are going to do the same thing because that's all they've got. Uh, this game could be, I mean, I think the over under is like 49, 49 and a half. I could see this going well over. Uh, so there should be a lot of fantasy points in this game. Um, what you got besides, besides uh, your obvious so, Kansas City pick? Yeah, my, my Kansas City, Detroit. I, I'm just looking forward to that game. I think that's going to be a really good game. Um, I, they, well, there's kind of two that I like. The one I wrote down was was just higher by half a point in the over under, so I'll stick with that. Carolina at Texans. Um, 
you know, Carolina, obviously we talked about them earlier with, with Allen being there and not uh, Cam. He had an awesome week last week. I think he can have another really good week against the Texans. They're fairly friendly from a uh, fantasy standpoint against opposing quarterbacks. Um, but they still have a solid defense. Uh, I just don't know if it's going to step up much this week. Um, I, th- I think Allen and CMC are going to give him a, you know, give them fits. Um, but then on the other side of the ball, you still got DeAndre Hopkins. You got Deshaun Watson. You got my boy, sixteen dollars worth of Jordan Atkins. I mean, watch him go, baby, go. <laughs> I guess uh, four touchdowns, twelve yards. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be very uh, Aaron Jones like. So All right, that's, man. My, that's my game. All right, so my lowest scoring games here are going to be Jags and Broncos. Uh, just not loving it. I mean, I know Minshew's been, you know, a fun story and all, but he's still not a great quarterback. The Broncos Delayed offense. reaction. Yay, streaming. Is that Howard again? Son of a bitch. Was that Howard? That wasn't. Um... No, that was Howard. That's not. That's not Sanders. I thought twenty four was Howard. Oh, twenty four. It is Howard. Or, <laughs> 24. Sorry, Sanders. I don't know why. No, I just Sanders. assumed that they're going to pass 20... the ball to any of the running backs. It's going to be Sanders, but. All right. I don't know. Doesn't yeah, matter. that wide open, dude. Yeah, wide dude, open. I'm kind of cake walk in. So, I uh, Giants Broncos, didn't play I mean, blah, whatever. Not loving this game at all. Uh, I guess at the minimum, without Jalen Ramsey, maybe the Broncos passing offense will do a little something. But I'm just not feeling it too much. What you got? Uh, my game of the week for. Horrible, mediocre play is Oakland at Indianapolis. Nobody cares except for people in Oakland and maybe Indianapolis. Yeah. Uh, brissett has been pretty good. I, I will give him that. Um, but I think uh, I think that th- that this game is just, uh, J- Josh Jacobs has been not good at all. You know, since week one, he he has been dealing with a slew of different injuries. But you know, Derek Carr, bleh, you know, Tyrell Williams, everybody's you know, eighty dollar waiver ads and fishbowl week two turned out to not really be doing much either. So just boring. No thanks. All right, let's do our sleepers and buzz here. This is rapid fire here. So I'm going to go quarterback for sleeper is Kyle Allen. Uh, Houston is allowing the six most points to quarterback. So I think this could be another opportunity for Kyle Allen to, to thrive. So I, I liked him. Yep. Already mentioned that game. I'm going with Andy Dalton. Big red, baby. <laughs> Let's keep it up. Keep up the good work. We'll see. We'll see, man. Uh, running back. I'm going Justin Jackson. You know, one more week of useful Jackson play here against Miami. Yeah, Ek- Ek will yeah. get his early, and they'll, they'll put in Jackson, and he'll get his too, just like last week with Dallas, man. Yeah, I, I definitely can see a lot of garbage time for Jackson. Uh, I'm going with Daryl Williams. I think uh, I think McCoy is going to start the game, and um, he is no longer tagged with any kind of injury stuff. So he'll start, but Williams being involved more in the passing game uh, I think is, is going to be the, the difference maker there. That game's going to be a definite shootout. Yeah, I like, I like that one. Um, wide receiver here, and I just mentioned this is a low-scoring game, but I think Cortland Sutton can do pretty well uh, with no Jalen Ramsey this week. You know, the Jags secondary can struggle just slightly. Um, so I think Sutton could do it. I, I would have picked Emmanuel Sanders as well, but he was just inside of our cap, so yeah, didn't pick him. Uh, I'm going to go with Devin Smith. Um, I like it. He is uh, the, that Dallas New Orleans game was the other game I was thinking about um, as uh, as my highest scoring. I think that's going to be a possible shootout game as well. And Randall Cobb hasn't really been existent for Dallas this year, uh, so all right. he's, he hasn't been bad. But you know, obviously Cooper's been been the main guy but i think uh in this game you know devin smith's going to step up new orleans secondary has not been good this year so i like smith 
All right, so our our bus here. I'm going quarterback with Jared Goff. I mean, I have him ranked kind of high just because you know the the matchup is good. But I wouldn't be one bit surprised if he finishes out of the top twelve again. I mean, he was another one of those guys that if you go back and look at the quarterback board earlier on in the in the podcast that you know he he was I think he was one of the ones on there and I, I don't know just the offense just is not quite humming like it did last year. And, you know, it's probably because Gurley's not. 100%. So I'm just not feeling I'm not feeling golf too much this week, but I mean the projections put him up high, so you've got you've got to put him up there, but you know, I might slide him down just slightly. All right, I'm going to go with uh Mr. Heisman pose Kyler Murray. Um I mean, he's been pretty good so far. Um four touchdowns, the three interceptions. Two games over 300 yards, uh, but you know, I had a major stinker last week against Carolina, and um, you know Seattle uh, from a yardage standpoint. Sorry, only uh, 173 yards uh, through the air, but Seattle, I just think is gonna they're gonna bounce back from last week, and uh, it's gonna be a tough tough climb for for Murray. All right, my running back is Devonta Freeman. Um, Tennessee's eighth best against the run this year. And, I mean, yeah, Freeman had kind of a good game last week. It, it was, you know, at least respectable. But he overall, he's disappointed this year, and, and I'm, not, I'm not feeling a, a good game out of him. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say chub-a-dub-dub. You's about to get drubbed <laughs> by the Balmer Ravens, son. Uh, part of it is because I'm still pissed off at him for last week. Um, and most of it is because the Ravens are the real deal. You know, they, they got a little beat up by McCoy and Daryl Williams out of the backfield last week, but whatever, that's Kansas city. So it, it, it's bound to happen there, but I think this is going to be, uh, I think this is going to be a pretty good game, but I, I could see it being a little bit lower scoring. Oh, you turd, you missed it. <laughs> I love your random comments during the game. God. Uh, all right, my receiver to finish things off here, Allen Robinson, Minnesota's eighth best against pass. Trubisky's been uh, not that good. I mean, let's be real about it. Not not good, not what you were hoping. Uh, so you know, the receivers are going to struggle here. Um, so... That's, that's my bust. Yeah, I like that. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, with Bobby Woods. Uh, right there with my Jared Goff pick. He's yeah, exactly. I mean, he was he's been a bit of a disappointment this year. I had him listed above. We didn't get to him because we talked forever about everybody else. So, um, I, I mean, Woods. I, I guess he's where he is, but with Cup being healthy, he's really been the guy. Um, you know, Cooks is still getting his, but for whatever reason, you know, Woods just hasn't been great. So I can see that trend continuing this week. Yeah, definitely he has struggled. Um, so defense streams, I know you mentioned this is a high-scoring game, and it's funny that's even in my notes. I wrote down Carolina as my defensive stream, and I said, yes, Houston might score a lot of points. Um uh, but that's not what I go for when I look for streaming defenses. Yeah. I go for floors, right? I go for for teams with safer floors and then upside, obviously, right? Um, with you know just tons of sacks. And if you look at it, uh, Houston's allowed twelve sacks already on the year, or yeah, they've allowed twelve sacks on the year, which is fifth most. And Carolina has twelve sacks on the year, third most. This is screaming like a four or five sack game from Carolina, right? Because that's just what yeah. Houston does. Uh, and then if that pressure gets to Watson at all, they get a couple picks, maybe a pick six. Like this could be a huge game by Carolina's defense. So that's kind of where I go with with those, and that's why I picked them. Yeah, I, I like that. You know, any any defense going against Houston, I feel like is going to get a ton of sacks. It's, yeah, that's just the way it is. Um. I'm going with Cincy here. Um, 
you know, I think that it's a division game. It's going to be a tight game. You know, we, it's not going to be a traditional game because Ben's not there. So I, I'm still not sold on Rudolph yet. Uh, we already talked about Connor being a disappointment, you know, he could easily get going in this game though. Cause since he's running defense is horrendous. So I could see it being a bounce back game for him, but I still think the defense is, is going to step up, play well. And I think since he's going to win the game. Hmm. All righty. I mean, well, we're, uh, we're closing it out for the night right now. It is uh Eagles got the ball with seven minutes to go in the third. Still a good ball game, man. It's going to be probably one of the few good Thursday night games we've had all year. 27, yeah. 20 Eagles. So, uh, I will look forward uh, oh, to closing oh. shop here and, uh, watching the rest of this game. Yeah, was was not too happy that uh, they went for two there. I get it. They want to get that eight point lead or the nine point lead, whatever. Take the point, man. Take the single point. Make them have to go for two to tie it. Yeah, I don't know why this is such rocket science for these people. Of course, the guy I'm playing in our league has uh, has Adams, <laughs> so I'm I'm looking at a cool twenty one point two points from him, and of course I'm starting the Packers D. Uh, that's a whopping three points so far. That's awesome. So yeah, I'm, cool. I didn't. I'm I didn't think the Eagles sitting. were going to come in and dominate quite like this, man. On offense, it's been it's been a good show for them. So yeah, um, I, I benched Wentz over ooh uh, in favor of Lamar Jackson. Oh, all right, uh, all right. I, I'll, and I'll then that one. <laughs> I benched Howard. I thought that I changed Howard in to play in my flex spot, but apparently I did not. So I've got a. Whopping twenty two point two points on the bench from him, which is Dude, how kind of expect, painful. How could you expect that though? Well, exactly. I, I mean I wrote about it on the depth chart today that Eagles running back should have a good games, but eh, whatever. I didn't listen to myself in time, I guess. <laughs> I'm still projected to win and I'm first in the league, so I'm okay with it. Yeah. All right, man. Uh have a good night and uh good luck to everybody in week four. See ya. Cheers.